Do you want to go to war? We we'll take you to war, okay? It's one of the hottest movies ever made. This is all time greatest movies. Never seen nothing like that. Nigga, that shit was a fucking Bible. It was like an adrenaline rush. Any American in motherfucking America got a motherfucking Scarface movie. Oh, what? I got some shit that'll kill you. I took on the Scarface name, man, because that was me, man. I watched this movie 63 times. I want the world to go. And everything in it. Get money, get money, get money, get money, get money. You want to make money? The ultimate ghetto superhero. Tony Montana has a ticking time bomb ready to explode. Hey! Ready to blow your fucking brains out. That was gangsta. He, he possibly kill you. If you was a comic book lover, you love Batman. If you was out in the streets, you love Scarface. Say good night to the bad guy. That's gangsta, nigga. Call me Scarface. Damn you! I think people um, don't realize the importance of a flick like this. You know what I mean? You, you got something that, that failed in the box office, but became a ghetto classic. Brian De Palma, like, I don't even know if he knows, like, of the impact that shit had on America, period. As time goes on, this movie gets bigger and bigger. That movie had a big effect on, on, on LA, period, you know? There's a lot of Latinos, you know, Mexican here, and to see Latinos doing it that big, on the screen, you know, that uh, that was real big for us, you know? They started a lot of slang, like, you soft, yayo. Chichi, chichi, get the yayo. The shit had niggas calling that coca yayo. I know that much, that was the first time I heard that, get the yayo. Chichi, get the yayo. Oh, that's where that came from? You know what I mean? Oh, that's what he was talking about? Fuck Gaspar Gomez, and fuck the fucking Diaz brothers. Fuck them off! I buried those cockroaches! You know, I, I look at Scarface as, like I said, a ghetto tale. I don't look at Star Scarface as a, 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 a drug movie. It's way beyond selling coke and selling drugs. It's about coming up. So what do you call yourself? Eh? Como se llama? Antonio Montana. Tony was a bad motherfucker, man. Tony Montana, man? He did do things, man. You know what I mean? He was one to be Tony Montana. People love that he was so determined to get where he needed to get. And I think a lot of guys just feel like, yo, you know what? Like, this dude is, he had balls, and he made it happen. Scarface represented the capitalistic society that we live in, but, you know, it also represented that you don't have to conform to society in order to, quote, unquote, make it. We all are savages in pursuit of the American dream. Rappers relate to that because that's how we come up. He falls into the anti-hero category, and that's where he's actually doing wrong, but the crowd is rooting for him because he's come from nothing, you know, and you know he rose to the top. So I guess in hip hop, I guess that's what attracts people to his character. Hip hop, especially street hip hop, is always about like you know what I'm saying, the come up come up with a rapper from the hood. His, his attitude was basically from nothing to a lot of something, you know what I mean? And that's, that's basically the rapper's mentality, you know? Before we started making records, we weren't sitting on Bentley's. We were sitting on the stoop or something. Scarface kind of gave it to a lot of people that this is the American dream, that you can have the world. This is Pada Santana. This town like a great big pussy, just waiting to get fucked. We were just happy to see another cat that had nothing making it, no matter how he was getting it. When you're some type of an entrepreneur, you have your own business and you're working hard, a lot of the homies can relate to that whole phrase, the world is mine, you know what I mean? He came from nothing. We seen him come from nothing and have to struggle to even just get his citizenship to where he had to get his hustle on it and, and turn nothing into something. This country, you have gotta make the money for. Then when you get the money, you get the power. Then when you get the power, then you get the woman. 
One of the things about hip hop is about, you know, empowerment at all costs. And Scarface was about empowerment at all costs. And when you see that, it kind of inspires you not to take no for an answer. I guess what inspired me most about the movie, man, was this cat was just like me. I come from the gutter. I could go right to the top. I knew right then, man, if, if that dude could do it like that, man, just come over here with nothing and leave away from here with everything I knew for a fact that that was for me. Tony, he was like, like a lot of us, was backed up against the wall. He had to fight to try to, to make it in this world. And that's one of the reasons why minorities relate to it so much, especially like black inner city minorities. Drug dealing and, and drug selling was like, was like one of the only ways we saw an out. My favorite scene was when he was basically on his way out of here and when he got set up with the Colombians. So you, you got the money? So you got the money? You got the stuff? You got the stuff? You want me to walk back in and start all over again? OK. You want me to come in, we start over again, man? But shorty, she's sitting there on the bed, and he looks up there, and he says, what's her name, Marga or Margo? Yeah, or something like that. And she just looks at him and then looks back at the TV. That was gangsta. I was like, wow. She pulled that shit out underneath the pillow and said something. Don't you move, you son. Get up! No, you never One of the most hardcore scenes was when the dude, um, when him tie up him brother in, in the bath, in, in the upstairs, and the man up blew a radio and I watched girl. I never know saying brother I get chopped up. That was a crazy scene with a um with a with a hacksaw. What the color thing that chainsaw? But as a, as a true trooper, he ran up on the guy and showed him why you know he should be respected and be Tony Montana. Yes, man. Damn you. Tony Montana, he himself uh, embodied um, being the opportunist. He himself embodied being moral. He himself embodied being loyal, being honorable. Somebody fucked up. They're sawing up his boy in the bathtub, but he wasn't gonna compromise the deal. You know, he had a mission and he was gonna carry it out. You know, no matter what happened. You know, he wasn't gonna rap. Lord, you sitting in right now, man. You got two keys, you got the money, you could have just cut. But he took it to Frank. You took out the money? Yeah. And I got the yeah, yo. You love that. Like, he comes back with the money in his own. And you love that he calls homeboy, like, no, I need to see your boss. Fuck you. I ain't taking it to look past myself. Like, you love that he's so determined. Even though Tony was, like, in a, in a wild game that we all know is a crazy game, you know what I'm saying, he still, he had his principles, he had his morals, you know what I'm saying? And, and you can you can basically trust Tony, man. You got to keep stick to your word, man, your word. All I got is my word, my balls. I don't break it for nobody, you hear me? All I have in this world is my balls and my word, and I don't break them for no one. You know, the, the machismo of, of Latinos is, is to be a man's man and to uh, stay to your word. He could just tell that Tony was genuine, you know what I'm saying? Even though they was in a crooked game, they knew Tony's heart was like, you know, he was truthful, you know what I'm saying? I like you, Tony. There is no lying in you. He, he was an upstanding gangster, which is rare. He played by rules and morals. Well, that's a certain code you gotta live by in the street, man. Lesson number one. Don't underestimate the other guy's greed. <laughs> Lesson number two. Don't get high on your own supply. That's right. Lesson number two, don't get high on your own supply. Plus, not everybody follows the rules, huh? Everybody should have rules. Everybody should have rules and parameters they set for themselves. Only thing is, is you gotta stick to them rules. The thing is, with success is the more you get, the more you want, the more you need. Me, I want what's coming to me. The world should go. And everything in it. You don't have anything and you get to a certain point where you can't get it. You want the whole world to know that I got it. What's he got a lot of Flash, bizarre. A little coke money doesn't hurt nobody, you know? 
when we come out the streets and get some paper, the whole world gonna know it, because we ain't never had it before, so we gonna live it to the utmost. Money, 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 that's all I ever hear in this house. He wanted the best girl, the best car, he wanted the best house. How much? 43,000 fully equipped. That all? Scarface was showing off. Tony was always fighting for, for position. Hey, Tony, what's your fight, you old girl? My own girl? Yeah, that's something I'm doing. And if he seen something he wanted, then he was gonna go after it. Yeah. So you, you had, he had that look in his eye when he seen her, like, okay. Yeah, when she came down in the elevator in that game, he, he sort of knew. She was a big role. She was like, he had to have it. He had to have the money, he had to have the power, but he had to have this chick. Not you're talking to me, baby. Not I like it. She kind of was the reason, like, yo, he kind of went crazy. Okay. Pussy gonna get him killed. Don't get confused, Tony. I don't fuck around with the help. He got on, finally he made it. He made mad dope. You know what I mean? He had it all. He wanted more. He started getting greedy. And that was the beginning of the, of the end for him. Now, I mean, I've seen a lot of hustlers go out the same way because of the chick, because of the, because of the way they move, you know what I mean? You giving me all this? Tony just got beside himself, and, and, and that's what, that was his demise. The only thing in this world that gives orders is boss. He was a greedy, delirious son of a bitch that grew up in a hard-ass time, and, and, and the results of it, you could see it by the scar on his face, just the results of that shit was like, you knew he was a ticking time bomb ready to explode. Fuck, you think I have fucking dumb boy? The other part of greed was just when the money started coming, he started getting high on his own supply. Fucked himself up right there, man. At the end of the day, drugs do it to you. Mm. You start feeling like Pete and playing with you. Manola was his man, and he loved him to death. Everybody has that homie that's been down with them forever. Nobody can't make it by themselves. I don't give a fuck who you are. When you around your brothers and you calling them brothers and it's your family, you got to know their habits and ways and actions so you know what boundaries not to cross. You can see his mood change when his homeboy wanted to date his, his sister, you know what I mean? You can see that, that death in his eyes. Hey! Just stay away from her. That nigga Manolo was a good nigga, man. You know what I mean? That was his man. If you my homeboy, you're not fucking my sister. Simple as that. That's another code in the street that goes unspoken. Niggas don't like when they mans fuck with their sister. Oh, yeah. that, that's against the rules right there. His man thought like, yo, then my man will fuck around and be happy if he see me and his sister together. But Tom was just bugging. He smoked, he sniffing that shit. The dope ain't good for your head, especially if you're not a strong-minded person. Drugs clouded his thought so much that it was like the red went off and it was like motherfucker. All he could see was his man fucking his sister. He couldn't see his man loving his sister. He had to take some type of action. I wouldn't have banged him. Mm -hmm. That was his best friend that came up together and then he killed him, you know what I'm saying? Like, no questions asked, didn't even know the real deal about the sister and everything. I honestly think he overreacted. Right, right, right. <laughs> a little bit. He feels betrayed. I can respect that, but emotionally, he just went too far. That was Tony's man, and I know it hurt Tony, but he's a man that lived by principle. So Nolo should have fucking died. No matter what, I would never kill my best friend. You can't smoke your own man and shit from, you know, that's your man from day one. Ain't no way you're going to get away with that shit, man. You got to pay a penalty for that, boy. Fuck. Gangsters don't kill kin and kind. He yeah, broke all, crazy, all, all codes, and, that, and you see that was his downfall. He got too, too wild, too crunk, you know, and he kind of killed himself. You mix cocaine with adrenaline and ego, and you have a, a man who, who, in his own mind, is just short of God. Say hello to my little friend! Say hello to my little friend! When he was facing death, he was like, listen, take as many as you can take before you die. You seen the ending? He said, fuck that. You ain't gonna kill me that easily. He went all out. What you think you fucking with, man? I don't even want that. Don't get high on your own supply to make you paranoid, and it'll make you think you can take all those bullets. You fuck with me. You fuck with me, man. Karma is a motherfucker. Like, he, he killed his buddy, and then, you know, everybody came, ran up in his house, and, and got him. Tony's rise and fall. 
he just lets you know that uh, it's possible no matter how big you are, no matter how much surveillance you got, no matter how many niggas you got, no matter how many guns you got, you can get that. I think Scarface really put it in perspective as far as the dope game. Sooner or later, you're either going to get killed or you're going to go to jail if you live your life like that. Tony Montana had a good heart, but he was more into this over here, getting the women, the clothes, the jewelry, the cars, and that shit caught up with him. I think that Tony lost his underdog position and lost the struggle. Scarface got everybody hyped. He was doing it. He was not having it. Only thing is, I didn't like him getting high on his own supply. I didn't like that. You know what I mean? You reap what you sow, you know what I'm saying? If you get into that business, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you have to know that there's consequences. To me, the movie Scarface is one of the most influential movies of, of all time because it's one of those movies that's heartfelt. It's a, it's a tale of a character who comes from a place where nothing is expected and he becomes everything from dedicating himself to what he believed in. What the fuck is that? You told me she took the kids in the other car. No matter how you feel about him, how you feel about what he did or his profession, you gotta respect his drive, you know, from where he came from and to where he went. You think I killed two kids and a woman? Fuck that! You die, motherfucker! I have to say this movie is the most culturally impactful for our generation because our generation was really put here with nothing. Like, statistically, being young, black, coming up in the 80s, we were either gonna end up dead or in jail. Impacted um, not only um, rappers, but a culture. And um, I think hip hop paid homage to um, Scarface by showing how much we really loved the movie. You can learn something different every time you watch it. If you watch it in a different perspective, if you don't just watch it for the violence, watch it for the lessons, watch it for, you know, to see what Tony did right, what he did wrong. There's so many lessons in that movie. It's like everybody come away with it, come away from it with something different. I think I was definitely one of the cats that was scared straight, you know, um, because me being an extremist, I knew that I would have ended up just like Scarface. I was in that direction. If I ain't have a little bit of knowledge to say, yo, wait, you got talent rhyming, I'll be fucked up. I think that movie definitely shows a lot of you know what I'm saying? The ups and downs and struggles of that, that lifestyle. I felt exposed. I had never seen a movie that depicted the reality, the intricate realities of street life. It was like the glamour, the glitch, but then the, also the downsides of it, which is the murder and the mayhem. You never cause harm to innocent people. Everybody that died in this movie was somebody who was drug dealers or somebody who was trying to cross a drug dealer. So Scarface never was no bad dude, so he, he you know, he's my idol forever. It's just real, and it, 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 it sure how life is for the third world, you know what I'm saying? If you hustle, you definitely gonna try to take it all away and be the illest, most legendary Scarface part three cat in history. So long, man. Have a good breath. Fuck you! No matter how bad he was, even at the end, taking all them bullets, that shit was gangster, but he died. Fuck Gaspar Gomez, and fuck the fucking Diaz brothers. Fuck them all. I buried those cockroaches. Say good night to the bad guy. Do you want to go to war? Come on. Do you want to go to war? We take you to war, OK? Say hello to my little friend. All I have in this world is my balls and my word, and I don't break them for no one. You want me to come in? We start over again, man. Hey! Fucking little monkey, not to fuck me! Hey, hey! Who the fuck do you think you're talking to, huh? You wanna fuck me? Who the fuck do you think I am, you fucking dumb boy?
Who's gonna sit here fuck on, right? So long, man. Have a good day. Fuck you! Shut that motherfucker! I stole him a cellar! You fuck with me! You fuck with the man!